post marriage, man, it's tough. It's it's definitely tough. Um, especially because like I'm not really trying to date right now. Um, and like I have a a more per, permit per, oh Lord Jesus promiscuous past. Good God, that is difficult. Um, Maybe it's just so, difficult to come to to terms with, come clean it's, about. It's different. <laughs> What's good? It's your boy, uh, Yoel. Uh, What's going down? Welcome to Yoel's Hangouts Podcast. I'm your host, uh, Yoel. I got a very special guest, my homie, my day one from, uh, from Portland, from Portland State University. I transferred there after OSU um, because I'm a fucking idiot. Um, Willie Hall, William Hall is his uh, birth birth certificate name, right? William William T to be exact. Do you have a Do you have a mic that actually that actually sounds way better than I thought? That is going to sound like shit, or is it just the the computer mic that you're using right now? Oh, see, it's still cutting off a little bit. Um, do I need a, Do I need something better? Um, nah, I think you're straight. If it fucks up, we'll we'll just redo sh- this shit. Um, but, uh, Willie's a homie of mine, um, day one again, uh, will, Willie, do you want to like, you know, give a quick, quick bio about yourself? Yeah. Or? I was waiting for you to shut up because first of all, I'm not from Portland. I only claim that city for tax purposes. You're from, from Washington. That's Tacoma, Washington. Born and raised. That. Tacoma made me 503 raised me or Tacoma raised me for me. 503 made me for me. Um, yeah. Born and raised out there. Went to high school out there went to Portland, um, went to PSU for approximately one and a half years. Um, and that half was just for the gym membership because we used to get it in. We, we used to, bro, pool. honestly, yeah. man, I don't know that is so true. That is so true because I, I, I kid you not, like I went to, I transferred. So I started at a community college and then I transferred to Oregon state, but mm-hmm. I'm not even kidding. Probably genuinely 80 percent of why i wanted to transfer so quickly to oregon state was to play basketball at dixon makes Isn't sense that funny Fuck, someone's, ringing, someone's ringing my doorbell i'll be right back just talk to the listeners <laughs> that's hilarious well y'all i hope i hope you guys are doing amazing um, i'm huge on just being positive and looking at life for what it's worth you feel me like especially in this covid season Things could be a trillion times worse. Like y'all have the ability of your limbs, your breathing, your walking, your talking. If you have a faith, you better thank God, Allah, the rocks, whatever. Bro, the heck. that was a. F- Sorry to cut you off. <laughs> you going deep, huh? Of course. Bro, that was just fucking Amazon, man. They knocked like the fucking police. That was hella annoying. It sounded hella serious. No, it was. It was. It was a ring and a pound, like double pound. So I was like, oh shit. I got to actually answer this shit. Mm-mm. This shit's annoying. But uh, what were you saying? Keep going. Um, yeah, just, you know, staying, staying positive with life because things could be worse. You could be dead. I hate to be deep, but, like, you could be dead. So, oh, wow. You know, this conversation butt. changed. What were you talking to them about? I was telling them about um, just, like, being positive because things could okay. be always worse, you know, and there's always going to be that person that is just never – sees anything as good you know they're always going to see of course we're both black men we're always going to see ourselves as living in the struggle and we're never going to be amount to anything but man just get up and go do something dog like, man, speak for yourself nigga no i'm just playing <laughs> <laughs> oh god i mean honestly like uh i don't know i just was like i always I thought know, I never try to go out and be like yeah my name's i'm abba and i have that youtube channel on on youtube bro like, i don't do bro, i really look like him He's saying I look like Abba from Abba and Preach. Their YouTube. Bro, you really could. You really could, and I feel like he would collab with you. Maybe, maybe he would just based off of the fact that we look similar and the fact that we're both Habasha. Facts. Maybe I'll uh I might slide in the DMs, but uh yeah man like you know even when I was younger bro I was like why am I gonna like no one's crying for me like why am I gonna like complain be down on the dumps I could either you know step up or be a whiny little bitch and then. You know, nothing changes. Like I just looked at shit logically. Facts. It's because I'm it's because I'm a Virgo, which is what my female friends would say. Vertigo or is it is it Virgo? It's Virgo. Vertigo. Oh, Virgo. yeah. I don't know. Bro. I don't really. I don't really. I only know what these girls tell me. 
Um, but uh, yeah, man, speaking of positive, staying positive, uh, you recently went through a divorce. Um, is it finalized? It's not finalized because the great state of Texas takes 60 to 90 days to get anything finalized after you go to court. And it's, and it's fucking Corona. And it's Corona. And e- corona apparently virus. everybody's getting divorced right now, which is crazy. Because you got to be with your significant other, man. Shit gets real when you actually have to be at the crib. Yeah, it's, it's wild. I guess in a lot of, a lot of um, drastic, when drastic things like happen to people, they just like rethink their whole life and they're just like, Oh yeah. yeah, I just want to do my own thing, so I'm out. I'm just like, I respect it, but my man raised no bitch, you feel me? So, like, I don't quit. Yeah. You know, my business partners and mentors say that I got a pit bull mentality because I just don't, like, I lock something. And when it's locked, it's locked. Uh, you you say that in regards to what? Specifically? Just anything. If I have my mind set on something, you can't change it. You can gotcha. try you can try very hard. Like my family tried to do that with school for the longest. They're like, you just need to go back. You need, yeah. to cr- you need it. And I'm like, I don't. Like, I promise you, I don't. We, we're both hella stubborn, bro. Oh, yeah. That's what I mean. Like, we like to have fun. You know, we play games. We keep yeah. shit light. But, nigga, I am so stubborn. Yeah. You are very stubborn, too. Like, we can't tell you. We can't. No one can tell us anything. Like, there's got to be, like, actual reasons. And be mm-hmm. like, oh, okay. That's a good point. Okay, I'll listen. I need reasons until you give me a good reason reason. your feelings. I don't care. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. Um, but how you dealing with it, bro? Not to get somber, like, you know, know, for, for, uh, let's make, let's make your, uh, you know, your experience may, may maybe of some utility for other people that, you know, are in struggling marriages or relationships. Uh, what things, what things maybe did you learn in retrospect? Do you think you could have done better? You know, what things do you think that, a lot of guys should know coming into marriage, you know, stuff like that. Man, um, those are those that's are that's a loaded one. Question. A very loaded one. Um, I work from it bit by bit, starting from the front. Um, what guys should work on going into marriage is it's not nothing to play with. It's it's not a joke. Like, yeah, you know, of course, being a guy, we just think sex all day, every day. But like, it's way deeper than that. Like, um, one thing I learned is, I mean, even staying on the topic of sex, like there's before sex and then there's after sex. Like if you don't get things right beforehand, then the actual act of sex is not going to be that pleasurable because she's worrying about this. She's worrying about this. You're worrying about this as well. So then when, when, when y'all both finish, or in most cases, just you finish as the dude, then, you know, you're sitting there just looking at each other like, okay, so we got to go back to this hell of hellish situation that we didn't fix beforehand. So it just, it's, it's a lot of just really men just preparing themselves mentally to actually be a man for the first time in your life. Like, mm. and you know, I can keep it a buck and say that because um, most men are just grown ass boys, you know, but like yeah. and I say that for myself too. I was a whole grown pre-teenager, you feel me? And yeah. it grew me up very quickly because I got married into um, having a three-year-old. Totally different aspect. Like it was it was not just being a husband, but it was also being a father, which was like, that's Fuck. that's a trip in itself like that was crazy and i either could honestly ca- catch the bullet or get hit by it and i chose to catch it you know um so yeah just really 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 learning about yourself and learning your tendencies and stuff like that um some of my mentors have always told me men keep the peace or men establish the peace but women keep the peace so if you're not establishing the peace consistently then there's no peace to be kept because you're supposed to be peace but if you're not then you got some issue you got to work on, fam. Um, leading into the actual marriage, I think the biggest the biggest lesson I learned in it is really learning where you want to go and establishing establishing your non negotiables. These are things that like won't waver on. Like if you're huge into into faith and religion and whatnot, and that person that you're interested in is not, then cut them to the curb. Like you're not gonna go to a job interview and tell them, you know, I'm thinking of trying to maybe go down this field, but I'm not really too sure. And if they need you to be down that specific field, they're going to let you loose because you're wasting their time. Same concept. Marriage is, is in a lot of senses, a business transaction. And if you think of it like a business transaction, it's 
it, man, it, it will go smoothly. But if you think of it as just somebody that's hot that I can have sex with all the time and we can go travel and all this stuff, then it will get old in about five to 10 years, probably sooner, you know? Yeah. Um, and post-marriage, man, it's tough. It's, it's definitely tough. Um, especially cause like, I'm not really trying to date right now. Um, and like I have a, a more per, permit, per, oh Lord Jesus, promiscuous past. Good God, that is difficult. Um, Maybe it's just so, difficult to come to, to terms with, come clean about. It's different. It's different. <laughs> I'm it's like, I'm like, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's difficult to walk away from that, um, especially when that's like all you know. You know, it's like it's like being a dude that like went to jail for, you know, gang related activities. And then like you're released, and all your friends are gang member, bang, gang bangers. Like, yeah. not, you want to obviously go back to the block, but you know, if you go back to the block, you're going to go back to the block, essentially. Yeah. So, you know, that's difficult, but at the same time, um, it's growing. And you're young, too. Like, how old are you? Bro. Yeah. 20 what? 23. Yeah, man. You yeah. think you you think you just came in a little too uh, early, too? In your um, there's a lot of things, man. I, I overlooked all the red flags my family gave me because I was so in love. Um, I also did. Give me, give me some examples. This is for uh, me, honestly. Fuck the listeners. <laughs> I'm just right. fucking. You know, I'm um, trying to learn. Being that we were at a distance, all we could do was communicate, and then like when we saw each other, it was just instant like flood of emotion. But like, oh, did she live in Texas? Lived in Texas, yeah. And I lived. Oh in fuck! Yeah. Every time we saw each other, it was goo goo gaga. Oh my gosh! Oh my yeah, gosh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, we never actually had reality until yeah. when we got married everything shut down a week later oh fuck we went from being distance to being stuck in a house quarantining damn all right things got with a three-year-old things got very real very quickly whoa yeah it was a lot and one of the biggest red flags um for me personally because i'm a huge man of faith i love god love jesus you know if you don't that's fine i ain't gonna hate you um but i'm big on growing being big on growing my faith personally so i have to have somebody that's growing their faith i'm yeah. not gonna say my wife is not of faith she believes in something i don't necessarily know what it is or and she doesn't really either um and that kind of took a turn so mm-hmm. when i'm sitting here praying meditating talking to god she's just like you know that's not really gonna fix the situation i hope you know that type of stuff and i'm like oh <laughs> yeah we're gonna have a lot of problems yeah even even off top like it does it, it just as like a respect thing like that yeah. there's going to be some fucking problems oh, yeah. that's huge i can't even like fathom that it's re- it, it, it like definitely cuz there's people cuz there's people that make it work you know different religions but yeah. like the biggest thing is like establishing that respect of like okay like he believes in god cool like you know i don't but i'm going to respect this person yeah. because i love him you know blah 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 i love her and yeah um you know but yeah man that's wild yeah and that was really there was just a lot of turning points in our in our marriage because she was some she was she was and she this is her words not mine of course she was she says that she was the person that she knew i wanted to be while we were dating but then became the person that she knew she was when we got married Mm -hmm. that's why i've always felt like there was just something there's a disconnect because like you were this 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 woman that i fell in love with that was amazing when we were dating but then when we get married, you switch it up. You're talking about you real. God like that. You're more interested in women. You want to go down that path, experience, experiment with it. And I'm like, hell no. To the yeah. now, now, now. That's not happening. But it's funny because then why did, like, if she wants to do all that, then, man, that's wild. Yeah, bro. I don't know. <laughs> I have lots of questions. I'm going to take my beanie off for this. <laughs> that beanie's kind of hard. Let me get it. My hair is just nappy right now. I need a haircut. <laughs> Can I get the beanie or no? What? Can I have your beanie or, or no? Uh, yeah, here. There you go. Damn, I should. That would have been nappy. cool if like you would have did that, and then like I would have came with a beanie on. That would have been cool. Hey, twenty years, man. You could probably fucking like deliver shit in like I'll seconds. What? I'll say five years. Yeah, maybe five years. Dang, my hair is nasty. Yeah. It's uh, but um yeah man that's rough yeah it's rough yeah i think uh i think you're a young man 
because that shit is like that's so serious and you know what's funny man like a lot of people that can do like long distance and like feel that it's normal are like people that like that's like you know like love languages like do you believe in that shit yeah oh yeah yeah so like some people's like love language like say they had a father that was like super absent or non-existent in their life Mm -hmm. like their love language is distance so like only seeing them once in a while like even if they had like you know divorced family and like you know whatever maybe it's funny i was talking to my roommate about it about this like their love language might be like them being distant so then once that relationship actually starts and then you realize that your spouse's love language isn't like that just circumstantially you know you guys were far apart um you're she's not going to be able or he honestly they're not going to be able to handle that and it's just not it's foreign to them and they feel uncomfortable and it's just like the chemistry is gone it's yeah, interesting and, our, and ours were complete opposites hers were words of affirmation and quality time and mine is um acts of service and receiving gifts wow, so like how interesting love, how she receives love is like is when i say foreign like words mean nothing to me you can say i'm a piece of shit i'm ugly yeah you know and i'm like all right cool i personally don't care that's part of growing up that's that's part of growing up fat like me and you you know what i'm saying we're just numb i had so many people (laughs) trying to hit me with bad jokes i'm like honestly my dude like your hairline hasn't been crispy since you've been born my guy so like damn are you attacking me right now because i'm ethiopian no, your forehead is i mean i'm you know to be honest though like keep it honest with me like my forehead is like below average for ethiopians it's average okay it's average i'll take that i was i was kind of fishing out as much if it poked out yeah it I'd, doesn't poke out it doesn't poke out at all yeah then you're, then i'd be like you're extremely hot yeah, yeah yeah no i'm, I'm chilling yeah i'm chilling side note but yeah man like what so you're so can you say the love languages that you guys had again i want to like hers was act um no hers was um words of affirmation and quality time and mine's is uh, service and receiving gifts. So, and my second question is, how do you give off love? Like, did it did it line up, did yours line up with hers? Like, for example, would you always give her words of affirmation? Like, were you good with that? It enough for her. Is it, the, the, let me rephrase that. It it was a it was a it was like a a weird complex puzzle because how I perceive situations isn't how she does because words mean so much to her. So like Mm -hmm. her mom could say something like, I don't like that dress you have on me being a guy. I'm like, mom, I don't care what you think about my clothes or dad, you know, I don't care. But like her being a woman that automatically makes her feel bad. Of course. That because the words of affirmation is her love language, it like heightens things. And she like goes to start thinking about it and stuff like that. Of course. that got me in a lot of trouble because I, what would you say? I would just, I would like, I mean, if we're having a, keep a, it a buck, keep, I'm gonna keep it a buck. No up with you. If we're having a grown moment, AKA argument, you know, I'll say something. And off the cuff. Her, hmm? You'd say something, you'd go left. Say something completely off the wall. So uh, like, we'll be arguing. I don't know about like money or something like that. And I'm like, well, if you stop fucking spending money on stupid shit, then we would have more money in our account. Like that's just, that's black or white. That's how I see things. And she would hear that as me attacking her before hearing the words I'm saying, but before hearing the logic that I'm saying, how she saw it. It's the delivery. We just logical ass niggas, bro. We got to learn. I got to, I'm learning every fucking day. Chick-fil-A and Whataburger. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's not about it. It's about how you're saying it. I know. I know. And I'm working on it. Now. <laughs> like I yeah, that was that was like hard. That was so hard. Whereas for me, I like I'm very particular in weird stuff. Like I for example, I don't like folding the clothes. Hate it. Told her I will not marry you unless if you unless you're folding the clothes. I hate folding clothes. So I found myself folding the clothes because she just sucked at folding my clothes. And I, and I was, right. oh my gosh. And because it's my love language, I guess yeah. I had my expectations. Like it showed, it showed like, it's not even, it's not even about the folding the, lang- the clothes. It's about you feeling like she doesn't care, which is why she's doing it. Yeah. That was exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It. So that it hurts. was, it was constantly doing, going back and forth, stuff like that. Like I come home, 
And, you know, I know she's been home all day with, with, with Pax, you know, her son and the kitchen's messy. There's toys everywhere. In my mind, I'm like, you knew I was old is she, by the way, she's a salon manager at Ulta. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, how old is she? Oh, she's 25. Okay. Got it. I'm a cougar, cougar chaser on the law. Hey, teach their own. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know, I would see like nothing done and I'm just like, like, what's like, what, you know, what's going on? Whereas in her mind, she's been depressed all day and has just wanted a hug and just to be reaffirmed that she's loved while I'm seeing a whole bunch of chaos and mess going on and like, why hasn't it been fixed? Damn. Maybe she wasn't ready, man. She wasn't ready for that wifey duties. She wasn't at all. And she's told me she wasn't. She wants to be by herself to, you know, do her own thing and and kind of just grow. Whereas I'm like, I've known for a minute that I've been ready for a wife, you know. Um, But at the same time, I'm not rushing to get married again. I'm not rushing to be in no relationship. Like, you know, I'm chilling. I'm not like, when pe- I hate when people say they're chilling because normally that just says means you're just being a hoe and fucking like I'm not even trying to do that. I'm just trying to yeah. like literally grow. You feel me? And like, oh, a hundred percent. Just be be a better Willie. You feel me? So yeah. No, I mean yeah. that, that's like me. Like I'm chilling, but it's in like you know I got people I'm talking to here and there, but I'm I'm my like ninety nine. Okay. <laughs> my ninety nine percent of my time is built on nigga. I'm I'm trying to grow this shit, bro. Bad. Very very slim margin for error. We're, we're black, man. We're young. They're trying to get and us, but they're trying to kill me. No, I'm just it's confusing. Like it just is. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just time too. Like just a lot of time, and you know, um, yeah, you don't want that headache. But yeah, man, like that's rough. That's tough. That's interesting though. It's good. It's good that you're being very vulnerable and open with your perspective because. You know, that could help a lot of people, man. I've been watching a lot of like self-help people and like, you know, what we were talking about a little bit and like that stuff is super interesting to me. I go in like flows, bro. And then whatever I think about and I consume, I always end up bringing it into the podcast somehow. Like I always tie it in and force the conversation to be about what I'm like consuming, Makes ironically. Sense. But um, yeah, man, it's a uh, it's tough shit. How's the uh how are the girls in uh in Texas? I know you're not you're not really keeping your eye oh, out. Oh bro, they are beautiful. I need they, to go out there, like, man. Where are you at again? Um I'm in Allen, so I'm about 40, 40 minutes away from Dallas. Got it, got it. It's like equivalent of Lake Oswego, or if you're in LA, it's probably like it's not Beverly Hills, but it's it's, it's like pretty like, nice. Yeah, it's it's got definitely it. solid. Um I mean, but it, the the culture out here is different. Because I remember in Portland, it was just kind of like, oh, you have a car. Oh, you have a job. Ooh, okay, you're really balling. Okay, oh, I don't really yeah. care where you stay at. But like, oh, you balling. Whereas out here, it's like, depending on where you're looking, is depending on the reaction. Because like where I'm staying at, it's it's more, it's more higher quality, more higher class. So like, folks, wait, you live where? Where do you work? I'm sorry, I can't really mess with you, cause Damn. at the Nike store, I need a nigga that's like in the Nike headquarters, and like you're only Damn. a retailer. <laughs> and I'm like, Damn. dang, cutthroat. It's, that's it's funny. Cutthroat. But, but like, to you be honest, that, you are fine. Like what? when you know you're fine, and you got a cornbread grown booty, you can do that, cause you yeah. got options. It's yeah, I like, mean, op- options dictate a lot, but also the environment, like. It's a cold world in some of these markets, bro. You know, you got to oh, get a nigga. You got to get a nigga that has a job, bro. You're going to starve to death. Portland, bro. I worked at Dutch Brothers and I had my own apartment and yeah. like I was chilling because, you know, yeah, like rent wasn't super cheap, but the environment just doesn't give a shit if you're balling. Yeah. Like LA, New York, Texas, I'm like Miami. I was just in fucking Miami. Like you got to have a nigga that's balling or else you're going to fucking starve. Especially if you're and like the, the, the whole like market is just it's so different. Everybody's hungry. That's yeah. that's what I really love about Texas. Everybody's hungry, but everybody's humble. Hmm. So it's weird. Hustling on the low. Yeah, like Portland, like niggas will let you know, like, oh bro, what you been doing? Well, actually, you know, I just started my real estate seminar, so I'm gonna be uh starting to appraise houses and I'm like, nigga, I don't care. Yeah. I'm not yeah. buying a house not right now. Like I appreciate it, but I don't care. 
Whereas yeah, people yeah. out there are like, they'll, they'll actually like meet up to network mm. outside of just like their casual meeting. Like, oh yeah, bro, you're a personal trainer. Oh, oh, or, oh yeah, give me a card. Yeah, bet, 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 bet. And they'll like meet and connect. So it's like, it's very small business oriented out here. Interesting. Which is cool. It's that really is cool. cool. It's like, yeah, I, I like, I'm sad to go back to the Northwest, but I'm like, oh, I can't wait to come back. Where are you going to go back to Tacoma? Or? Uh, Bellevue. Bellevue. Bellevue, yeah. Okay, Bellevue's cool. It's, are you going to get a different job out there or still work? No, nah, same, same company. They're letting me transfer. Uh, I mean, I'm not transferring. I'm just working from home. So I'm going to be staying with my family and just uh, working from home stacking. That's sick. Oh, your family lives out there? Yeah, I got, bro, I got family all, all over the Northwest. Damn, man. Black people, bro. Facts. We got hitters everywhere. So do Ethiopians, bro. Oklahoma, Portland, Cali, yeah. Louisiana, Texas. When are you moving back? Uh, Next Saturday. <laughs> oh, for real? Oh, yeah, shit. Bro. I'm going to be in uh, Portland um for Christmas. Maybe we can link. Oh, let's link, bro. If you come down. Oh, my sister. She's going up to Seattle at some point. I think for New Year's. So y'all could links if y'all kick it. I don't know. Do you guys talk? Um, We talked... The last time, the second to last time I called you, she answered. Then we were talking. That was the first time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, whoa, Tale, how you doing? Tale, sorry. Bro, that that me. Well, what the hell? I know, she's so white, uh, but so am I. (laughs) You're not 100% white. Yeah, no, I got, I'm like mixed. You're corporate. You're corporate black. Corporate black? Ouch, I'd rather be white, bro. No, you wouldn't. Now I'm going to try to talk hella gangster shit. You know what I'm saying? What? Sound like Jay Z now. Like now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, I'm you like, sounds I'm like he's always, about to cry. He always what? does. I've always said that I'm country and like living out here, like I've embraced the freak out of it. You're not, you like, became, you like wore Crocs and like fucking, uh, what do you call it? Uh, camo and shit. But it was kind of a joke though. You're not country. I wouldn't add- I'm not that like I'm not like Carhartts and and freaking. Romeos. But you low key are no Romeos, but Carhartts. Carhartts are fire. Carhartt hats are fire. They make good shit. My dad started wearing Carhartts. I was like, damn, you are in agriculture, you fucking hick. But it's kind of cool. It's it's like it, I think the next thing that will live past roaches is Carhartt because like roaches and everything. Roaches. Like, you know, when, like, an apocalypse happens and, like, roaches are the only thing that's going to survive. Oh, Carhartt? Yeah, they make good shit, man. It's for utility purposes. That's why. I'm not paying $200 for a pair of boots, though. I'm, I'm not. Nah, bro. It's never that serious. It's never that vibes. No. no. Um, so you've been... Accent. Say it again? I got my little country accent and all that. You feel me? You know, I'm, I'm, from, I'm from the Northwest. You heard, but, like... Really, I'd be like, you know, I'll be doing my thing on that area, you feel me? You know, just be like, you sound yeah. like you're from like Kentucky or some shit. That doesn't sound like a Texas like country I accent. Didn't have an accent. It, you go more towards Houston, they just talk slower. But like, that was more, that was more New Orleans. I feel like that's like country. Like, I'm saying like not like away from the big city. Like, people can't fucking read out there and shit. There's yeah. like no schools and they live off the land. Like, What's up, baby? How you doing? You good? Yeah. They've been treating you good. That's good, boy. Dang, I want that accent. That's so funny. I'm like, where are you from? Man, I'm from Dallas. I'm from East Dallas. You feel me? I'm like, I want a code switch like that. Just talk like this and then just fucking break down into fucking like, it you is, know? It is, I was like, it's such a, I feel so, like I have a super Do you follow a Drewski? You know that comedian oh. Drewski from like oh. all of the, uh, he's in the uh, Drake's uh, music video. Big fatter dude. Have you seen I don't it? Like, well, I like, I mean, I'm a Drake fan, but like up until about. Don't like, be following him like that. He's friends with o- OBJ. I'll, I'll send it to him. You'll probably be like, be like, oh yeah, you know, I've seen that nigga around. Yeah. Like. He's funny because he does like a bunch of skits, but he makes because he grew up in Atlanta, but he grew up in between like the ghetto of Atlanta and like the white part of Atlanta. So he just roasts fucking like white country like frat dudes, but then he just code switches and like actually genuinely makes fun of like hood niggas and shit. And like, it's so fucking funny. You're gonna get that. 
Gonna get that two piece. <laughs> it, bro, it is funny because like he gets it spot on for both sides. And that's why he's I mean, he's fucking blowing up right now. His shit's funny. funny. I'll send it to you. But um yeah, man, you are you on this new path. You know, we was talking about nutrition a little bit. Uh, what's your, you know, what, what's your, uh, what's your motive? What are you trying to do? What's, what's, what's the plan? Um, honest to God, my biggest, my biggest motive and like my motivating force is I want to be, I, I don't have a problem with working out. I don't, I love working out. It is amazing. Um, I just started to actually like running. Like it's like a reverse. Do you hike at all? I said, do you hike at all? I never did in Washington because, like, I'm I'm a nigga. Like, bro, I never did too until I, I got down I, when it's I, hot. I would hike, but and yeah. every nigga had in their bio that they hiked, and I'm like, bro, what's so I, cool about hiking in the rain and where it's muddy and shit? Bro, I, I'm going everywhere when I get back. Everywhere. Oh, That's for the real? now now you're now you're hooked, huh? I'm so hooked. I'm hooked on phonics type hooked. Like, That's funny. I, Hiking's I, good, man. Yeah, it feels good. If, yeah, and like yeah. I like the feeling of like my lungs opening, like I can legit feel my like lungs opening and all that stuff. And I'm like, yo, this is kind of cool. Different, 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 different. <laughs> I got that shit yeah. from you. I'm so pissed. Sometimes oh, I say, uh, hey, swing that shit. You used to always okay. say that shit. Hey, <laughs> swing me a bite. <laughs> I'd be like, what? Whatever, whatever I'd be like, is- I was like, Will is so cool. He's putting me on a bunch of fucking different <laughs> slang and shit. Whenever uh, we used to want a ball, we'd just be like, look at each other and just. Every time. No, I'm saying. Bro, us hooping, that shit was, PSU hooping was different. It was just a joke. It was People a joke. Rather just fuck like around. Hoopers come there and hoop, and I'm like, nigga, I will kill you. Isn't that funny, bro? The gyms were like, it was either the basketball team would go there and just fucking shit on everyone, or it was like bums. There's no in between. OSU had a lot of in between, like, you know, ex high school, you know, that like range, like hella of those, which th- that's why I like to run. And it was predictable. There's like three courts, like trash ass niggas, okay niggas, and then really good niggas. Then like yeah. the really good niggas, and you'd be like, oh, I'm gonna stay away from that court. I'll just stay on this happy medium. No, I would go. I mean, sometimes I get ripped apart, but sometimes, you know, I, I'd, uh, I'd come up, come out on top. But uh, I know yeah, myself, man. I'll stay in the medium. Yeah, 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 but you fun. So like, no team's gonna be like, "Fuck, Willie's here. He's gonna fuck us over." Oh it's yeah, like, like, hey, the fact no, you just be cracking so jokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, yo, really? That's like, the key. <laughs> if you're gonna be trash, at least fuck around and be funny. That's, but I'm, you know, I'm not trash. But like, I'm no, also, no, 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 no. Like, I'm just, I'm a happy medium. I'm as good as you really yeah. need to be as a black person. But like, yeah. I wasn't no all star. You feel me? And I had no yeah, yeah. aspirations to be because that's for the birds. Yeah. It, you don't really need to, I mean, are you going to try to try out for the D-League or, um, but yeah, man. So w- what else you've been doing, bro? Um, nutrition wise, been working out, um, been building my Amway business, doing that heavy. What is that? Um, reading, doing a lot of reading. What's Amway? Amway is, Amway is a, is a distribution company. They're like, they're like Golden State Foods for McDonald's, per se. They like make a whole lot of different products from like water, laundry detergent, soaps. Um, they were real big back in like back when they first started for like going door to door and selling soaps. Obviously, I ain't going. I'm, I'm not no door to door salesman or nothing like that. So and that'll have you done that before. Hmm? Have you done door to door sales before? I did. Um, I did in twenty. Not door to door. No, 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 no. Um, I did in 2015. That'll build character. Huh? That'll build character. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I was um, a part of a multi-level marketing um, company called Vector Marketing, which was just cut code. I've heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. It was was like, the way they explain things is very, very, I'm not going to say manipulative, but if you don't know what you're looking for, then you'll get get caught in it. Um, And like, I was just like, I mean, this is cool and all, but like, I don't know nobody that wants no fifteen hundred dollar fucking knives. Like, I, I don't. Tough. I don't. Tough. Who doesn't? Who doesn't want water? Like, who doesn't want supplements? Who doesn't want chips and detergent? Yeah. That's every well, even in a pandemic, you're still gonna fucking need. So I'm like, yeah. oh, cool. and this is an opportunity for me to get to where I want to go in the shortest route possible. Logical. Yeah, for That's sure. Cool. 
Um, yeah, working out um, on that tough and um, like trying to, not trying to, but relearning what I like. Mm. I think a lot of people don't know what they actually like. In what category or just everything? Everything. Give me, start, start me with something. What? Favorite food off the top of your head. Um, the thing is my nutrition hella changed, like my diet and shit. So yeah, yeah. but yeah, but I do like pizza. Okay. But I can't eat it. <laughs> Pineapples on or off? Pineapples, yeah, sometimes. If there, if it's there. Sometimes, bro, you're weird. I like pineapples on my pizza. Do you? Of course, I'll put them on yeah. every time. Really? Oh, it's like too sweet sometimes. I want it like salty and like flavorful, maybe a little bit of spicy. Yes, you sim. Yes, you sim. It's like it's <laughs> blessing me in my language. It's funny because you speak more Amarinya than me. Ow. Which I love. You're like endemene, which means how are you? I'm no. I gotta start flexing that a little more. You know, girls be like, "What is that? What is that?" And I'll be like, oh, "You know, it's some hard. You know, what I'm saying it's just the language that I speak. You know, what I'm saying." And they're like, "Oh my god, that's not cool, <laughs> bro." Like, if what? I ever found with you and I saw you trying to go up to a girl like that, I'd be like, "I'm so sorry. This is not him. This is not <laughs> He's him. special. No, just, like, nah, just we'll take his number down. Y'all go meet that." Nah, I just I would never do that, bro. Yeah. That would be so corny. <laughs> Speaking of game, bro, it's funny we were talking about like how like you're like I'm a big dude, but like I've never had problems with like girls and shit. Yeah, man, speak to that, man. Like people, I feel like people like for me, like even when I, you know, I still got some weight to lose, of course. But even when I was big, you know, in high school, middle school, you know, I was pretty popular. You know, girls liked me. You know, it wasn't like a massive issue until I started losing the weight, and then I was like, oh fuck. Like, like I was, I was fucking ugly. I don't know how these girls like me, but, but the thing is I started to get like, once I slimmed out, I started to get attention from girls that didn't know me. That was new to me. Mm, like getting yeah. from girls Just physically. That's when you get to, when you get to that level, it gets interesting. Cause you're just like, Oh fuck. That's so cool. Like I didn't even have to like be funny and like all this shit. Right. So like for those, for those, go ahead. I was, you're, no, I was saying like this is simple. Like it just makes life a lot easier. Yeah. So like, I try to get at girls on some just like you know some of my you know like you know what you're trying to get into type stuff. Like like I'm not Chris Brown. I don't yeah. think any dude that just is not extremely attractive can do that successfully yeah. because that's an hell waiting to happen. Because yeah. nothing hurts worse than you trying to you putting your all into putting some words out there towards another female that you find attractive and her being like, nigga, you're ugly. Bye. Like, I don't want to talk to you. Yeah. 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 You just hit the wall. You just fight an uphill battle. Right. And you're just like, hey, ain't nobody want you anyway with your bologna slice titties. Out. Like, no, like, no, Jeez. like, no, like that's not going to happen. So, and ironically, I, I got my wife, I don't want to say got her, but like, I named her all being, being myself for the first yeah. time ever. Like I Isn't hit her. That with interesting. Song song fucking lyrics i've never done that before it just felt right and it felt what, what, how, how did you court her i love how we talked about the divorce now we're about to talk about like how you got her and shit how oh. did you like what was your guys's like i feel like this is something a conversation you have like when you're about to get married it's like how did you guys meet and shit <laughs> yeah but fuck it let's run it so i met her i met her in 2017 in a group chat that i was in i don't know how i ended up in it because i was the only person in Washington, everybody else was in Texas or like Tennessee or like, right, whatever. And I had tried to get at two other girls in the group chat, who were both in Texas, who both live like maybe. You cast in a net, my nigga. Oh, bro, I was speaking in Texas for years. I'm, I'm <laughs> You're just Texas. like, whoever catches this line. I had tried to get at like six or seven different girls out here. <laughs> <laughs> did not care, bro. And um, so, you know, a year went by because I know she had a boyfriend and I always thought she was cute. But I saw she had a son and a boyfriend. And I was like, that's two red flags. Yeah. I'll accept one. But two, nah, I can't do that. The kid? Yeah. And I was like, and I didn't even know I would, would be willing to accept one. I was just like, thinking back on it, I will never date with somebody that has a kid. It's just, it's just too much unnecessary drama, you know, dealing with It's a lot, man. It's a lot. Because I feel like the girl, I feel like if, if that is going to happen, then that dude 
and that girl, one of them cannot cannot not have their shit together, know who they are, like are mature as fuck. Yeah. If one one of them or both of them are not there yet, like it is gonna expose the living fuck out of those vulnerabilities. Yes, yeah. sir. So um I waited a year and I was at a um event that some of my mentors were hosting and I was like, oh what's this? I was on Snapchat, I'll never forget. She was in Disney World and she had on like blue jeans with like a yellow shirt, I think, and had some box braids. And I'm a sucker for some box braids. Oh uh, box braids look like? Box braids. I mean, they're just like generic braids that most black women have. They're just Got it. like they're just I, the smell of them, the texture. <laughs> to be honest, they are just they are <laughs> if you have any followers with some box braids, slide them my way. I would appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm I don't sure. know. But anyway, but, uh, if you want to uh, slide in Willie Beeman, Will, Will, William Hall, what's your Instagram? Um, Fuck that shit. Fuck it. Uh, I don't even know. I think it's King Theo. Understand. Never mind, nigga. You lost it. You lost the opportunity. I, I would believe it. I, 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 All right, keep going with your story. And I'm gonna and I'm going to continue to look at for it. William underscore T underscore Hall. That's so ugly. There we go. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah, so I hit her with some song lyrics. It gave her Omar, blind man. I said, quote, you're so beautiful, a blind man could love you, unquote. And she was like, ooh, that's so cute. Okay, I see you. I was like, okay. Where do you go from here? Um, this never yeah. worked. You know, yeah. I, uh, yeah, you're cute too. I said, she said that. Um, uh, yeah, and she like loved that I was so corny. I don't know why. That's funny. She, Lo and behold, she ended up showing, like, she would tell me, like, a couple years, like, a year or so later that she had showed her little sister. And she was like, who is this nigga that's, like, hitting me up? And her sister was like, just reply back to him and see where it goes. So if her sister wouldn't have ever said that, she wouldn't have replied. Wow. Crazy. Crazy. That's funny. That's funny how that works. Crazy. So I could start one of those, like, those, like, trends, like, started in the DMs, ended up married. Now we're divorced. That'd be a funny TikTok. That'd be hilarious. That'd blow up, probably. I don't even have a TikTok. Or Reels. What do you call it? Uh, Instagram Reels. But um, yeah, man, it's funny how like much of an impact. I mean, what, that's actually not funny. It's pretty like fair. Like women, like how much they need like community, like as part of like their like oh. filtration system. Like oh. they need someone, like they need their girlfriends to be like, oh yeah, he's cute. Like go for it. If they don't, then they're not going to. Well, I've taken so many L's from that, from sorority girls. Yeah, like, like their girl, their 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 soror- their sorority sisters, like, nah, I don't. It's not even that. It'd be like, oh wait, isn't this isn't this him? And they'll send another picture of me. I'm like, oh yeah, he tried to get at so and so like a year or two ago. Yeah. Um, I guess girl code just after a year, like that doesn't erase. Like dude code is like, I mean, I you no, know, it was a year, man. You still like her? No, all right, cool. It's all yours, man. I'm like. But girls, yeah. it's like, oh no, it's a seven year. It's like, it's like creditors. Like it's a seven year hiatus. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to pick the one you want out of that particular community. And see, and like that, yeah, that's and that's. What and look, I'm it's at. not impossible, obviously, but it's less messy. I feel it, like it, it is, especially being in the Northwest because there's already like five black people. Yeah, man. Three of which that's are like, so funny because a lot of like. A lot of people think I don't like black women. I'm like, dog, I grew up around five and four of them I wasn't attracted to. It's not that I don't like I, you. You know what I'm saying? Tacoma's different. Tacoma has black people, I feel like. They're ghetto. Yeah, but at least there's black people. This is true. They're still ghetto. Is- yeah, but there's zero black people in Portland. Zero. Yeah. Yeah, you go. I mean, you get a little more once you get past one twenty second to about one eighty fourth, but yeah, that's like a whole bunch of like Africans. Yeah, you risk the chance of that being your cousin, sister, or something. Yeah, man, super difficult for me to date within my uh, within my ethnicity. I I don't know why. It just paranoids. Like it, it's it's trauma of years of my parents being like, "That's your cousin. That's your cousin. That's your cousin." You know, because you know, fucking Ethiopian. Like you're not supposed to date somebody within your seven like last names or something like that. I was like, bro, that's that's terrible. Like, that's too few. Yeah, I guess, but I mean, I don't know. 
I don't know, man. I'm not really, I'm not really tripping. I was just like, okay, I'm just not going to date any Ethiopians, which I was completely fine with. I'll go get a Karen. It's cool. No, no, not a Karen. I mean, Latinas. Okay, I was going to say, yeah. girls. Uh, uh, what are, what are, what are the names of beach trips or something? <laughs> what? Um, but no, I mean, I don't really see race. No, I'm just playing. That's so corny. No, but I mean, I, I really do like, it, um, you know, you got to vibe with people. Yeah, for sure. hundred percent. Because I'm too lazy. If we don't vibe, then I'm just like so lazy. I have, I'm focusing I have, on my own shit. So I only go for chocolate because I just, I got to stick to Like, there's nothing. For chocolate? Nothing like a good old piece of some chocolate. Ugh. Damn, you do got a sweet tooth. I got a have sweet you ever dated a white girl? Yeah, I've dated and had sex with a few, like a few. Oh wow, that got yeah. intense. Yeah, I I never like dated people. That was the thing. I just was really having sex with people. Yeah, I've never like seriously dated anybody, but like yeah, hook up obviously. Not You're not. What? White girls are cool. Like they're cool. They get. It's the just job. not for you. They they're, get the huh? job done. They get the job done. They yeah. don't embarrass me. White girls are like McDonald's. Like they're consistent. They're always there. You never miss nothing. Like you know, you know what McDonald's has on the menu. It's always a Big Mac, a McChicken. I feel like you like you like them more crazy, huh? Not it's crazy. More entertaining. No, I like them. Um, I like the low key girls. Low key like, black girls. No, no, I like low key like girls just in general. Got it. The one that's like not talking to anybody in the whole group, I'll probably go for her. Got it. I don't know. You feel why. like she? You feel like she's safer? She's she's safer subconsciously. Yeah, she's naturally she's safer, but also um. Actually, that's a good point because I would all I would naturally <laughs> one that's talking is way more attractive. But I'm like, mm, the one that's not talking is safe. That's Less risky. Safe. Hey, um, you know yeah, what I'm saying. Safe. Very I just fucking broke your ass down. <laughs> you did. I didn't even think about it. Um, yeah, she's usually the safe one, and I'm like, I'm cool off that. Like, I want, I want the point in life where I'm like, you like the control. Life. Yeah. Oh yeah, love it. I like, I like, I like a little bit of control as well. I no, I love it. Love yeah. It. Damn, they That's got awesome. deep. Um, but yeah, being a, I don't know how we got off topic, but being a bigger dude. Going for gals has never really been a challenge, but I've always had a mouthpiece. I, have always I think had that's a- the key, man. Like, I don't know. Like, guys really be like, even my short homies, like, they'll really overthink shit. They'll be like, oh, man, is she tall? I'm like, shut the fuck up. Like, if you don't give a fuck, she don't give a fuck. If you're acting like a little bitch, she's going to treat you like a little bitch. I will climb a tree, baby. Just make it happen. Yeah, you got to be funny about it. You know what I'm saying? Be like, hey, can I climb you? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Get a little, get a little axe, you know, knock you down a, little, a couple of notches. I don't, got a good, I don't have good uh, short people uh, comebacks because I'm not short. Either, but I'm not, like, short. You're 5'10"? 5'9". 5'9", yeah. See, I knew it. Don't, don't um, but, uh, yeah, man, for my listeners out there, dudes out there, short, like, you know, whatever the fuck you think is going to keep you from getting girls, bro. Like, if you're confident and confident comes with, like, you know, having your shit together as much as you can, which you don't even have to have your shit together. Just have good qualities that are admirable and, you know, keep grinding, keep hustling, keep, keep hustling, keep hustling, keep grinding, you know, have your shit together. Keep going. I feel like. And this hit me like a pack of bricks. That's why I was like, time out. Because I feel like most dudes, when they hear they got to get their shit together, they, they think like they got to have their their career set up. They got to no. freaking have a nice whip. They got to do all this stuff. And I'm like, bro, you can work at McDonald's and catch the max for my Portland listeners or the bus, whatever the case is. But as long as you are growing, your shit's together. Yeah. Your environment does not depict you. That was and weird. you have the qualities of someone that will eventually have their shit together. Because if you are hustling, but you're not grinding, you're not making good decisions, you're not disciplined, then it's going to be very difficult for you. So, yeah. And you got to, you know, speak. And then that should give you confidence knowing that, hey, like, I'm not where I need to be right now. But guess what? I'm working out. I'm working on my, on my career. 
you know, I'm trying to put myself in uncomfortable situations to grow. Um, the future's looking bright for me. Is it perfect right now? No, of course not. But that should give you the confidence to approach a woman confidently and let her know that, hey, like, you know, I got some shit, um, you know, you got to respect yourself first, I think. Exactly. And they can sense that. Like, if they can sense that, man. Like, okay, bye. But like, hey, I, I genuinely am attracted to you. I would love to get to know you. Can I buy you a cup of coffee? What woman's going to say no to that? No, nah, it has never failed. People complicate shit because they feel like all they have is that one fucking sharp thing that they're going to say. Right. Like, like, if I wanted to talk, if I wanted to uh, dance with a girl at like imp- at a White Owl or any of these fucking Portland bars, I'd be like, "Hey, um, I think you're really pretty. Um, do you want to dance?" It's really not complicated. It's how you say it, though, too. It is, and it's how you like. The, I mean, there's a lot of like factors. It's how you walk up. It's how you look. Yeah, but even if she doesn't see you, and and you can't come in like a little bitch, you can't be like. Hey, um, I just like you can't talk like almost like borderline like v- extremely feminine. You're like, hey, what's up? Like, sorry to interrupt. Um, but um, uh, I just think you're like super pretty. Like, honestly, like you are really cute. And uh, I was wondering if you'd like want to dance with me, bro. I would die. But really, dudes think that's gonna work. Hey, so um, I was because they're nervous, so they they t- end up talking that way. You know well, what I mean? Oh, I was really nah you can't do that yeah nigga you're mumbling yeah literally be like hey i think you're really cute uh do you want to go dance like as if it's like the normalest shit on the planet look her in the fucking eyes all you want but keep it inside say it again you can be freaking out like in the whole scenario but keep it inside internalize it yeah and if you're present and you just like go ahead Oh, no, I'll say that, like, she sees you shaking and all that stuff. That's not going to, like, help you, my guy. Like, no. And even if you take an L, just walk away and take your L in, in pride. Don't don't be on the weird stuff. If I hear no. dudes on some weird stuff. What, you not finna dance with me? No, nah, run my ones outside, my guy. That's, that's disrespectful. You look square <laughs> as fuck if you act that way. And you know what's funny, bro? If you, and honestly, like, side note, you could have, like, a beer, you know, get a little loose psychologically. It might not even literally, it might be a placebo, like, dead ass. But um, honestly, if you just, like, if you don't take that L personally, which you shouldn't, because there's plenty of girls out there, and it's fine. Maybe. She's going to, she might have just thrown her off. Girls say no for, I never thought that a girl said no to me because I was ugly. I always thought, like, you know, maybe she's has a boyfriend. Maybe she's trying to yeah. kick it with her friends. Maybe, you know, there's shit ton of reasons. Guess what? She's going to probably be, be watching you, you know, around the dance. And if you, you know, are not being taken it personally, then. Come up to you. What? That's, a, that's when she'll casually come up to you and start gigging on you. Like, oh, snap. Yeah, she, she'll probably like end up, you know, hang, like dancing around you. She'll probably end up, you know, trying to ho- kind of hovering or, you know, even come up to you formally and like be like hey you know but yeah man i think uh there's a lot of people that really get it fucked up and and right now right now is a very difficult time though for people that you know for me like i like to interact face to face i do way better face to face than i do with like on like tinder and like sliding in dms i'm not that guy at all Um, i'm way too lazy but um yeah man this is this is some good stuff But uh, I'm going to wrap it up, dog. Thank you for coming on the show. Um, We will talk soon. Willie Beeman, my OG. Um, Any last words for the listeners? You want to maybe plug some shit in if you want? 2020 has been a year, y'all. It's been some ups. It's been some downs. It's been some arounds and throughs. But at the end of the day, make sure that you are bettering yourself, whatever that might be. That's just getting out of bed and a day that you don't feel like doing shit and get out of bed. If that means you got to go start a book that you've been trying to write the last 15 years, go start that book. Okay. But whatever you do, keep listening to my guy because he's producing some phenomenal content. Tell him to get a haircut because his hair looks atrocious. I um, do. I need to get a haircut. My background's interesting. It looks like like a popsicle or something. We're not going to talk about it, though. The popsicle? Um, yeah. I think it's, it's like luscious. Yeah, it's different. I know. That's why, but it's, but you remember it. That's I, the key. 
You're it talking. reminds me of like a sex scene from like a, a strip club. That's cool. Man, God forbid we have a little bit of spice on this boring ass fucking Zoom call. You know what I'm saying? Like I hate the vid- I hate the camera work where it doesn't move around. So I was like, let me spice it up. Let me throw a light in here. You I respect it. The content's long- good. That, like, like, that's the real key. Yeah, the con- that's cool. You know, it's a fun, fun conversation. It's interesting. You know, I try to keep a balance of like fun, but still, you know, keep it, you know, have some utility to it. But um, yeah, the light, it, it annoys a lot of people. people. Like Peter was like, bro, that light is so corny. Like, why are you Peter, making like... Oh my gosh. I he was on my show a little bit ago, bro. You should have ca- caught it. Gosh. I gotta he does go. my outro. He does? Yeah, it's funny. Because I was like, I was talking to him. I was like, hey, man, like, I don't know. Like, I'm not really good with like the intro outro shit. I really hate repetitive shit. I think it's kind of corny. But uh, he's like, no, you just got to do it like this. Like, hey, this has been the blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, hey, I'm actually going to use that shit for the end of my show. Uh, I'm going to have to li- listen to it. Is he still making beats? Oh, probably. Oh, no. He's producing a podcast for like these two guys or three guys. Okay. Yeah. That's what's so he's, doing, he's doing his thing. He's still doing engineering yeah. stuff. Yeah. What? I've got the leaf blower outside. They're being loud. I can't hear it, honestly. Oh, cool. Zoom, Zoom's pretty good with like that yeah, stuff. Solid. Um, but yeah, man, thanks for coming on. Um, thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching. This is Yoel's Hangouts Podcast. And that is the Yoel's Hangout Podcast, guys. Thanks for coming along. If you can, please leave a five-star review on Apple, Google Play, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. That'd be lovely. Uh, leave a comment as well. We, we really appreciate that. Thanks.